Hello everybody and welcome. Today I want to talk about facade vectors. And this again might sound like a technical term, but give me a few minutes. What is graceful? What is a graceful shape? Let's have a look at the kingdom of animals. There are animals with steep vectors, steep silhouettes, and there are animals with flat silhouettes. For instance, look at a giraffe. A giraffe is a very graceful animal, like a horse, or a stork, or a heron. They are graceful animals because their silhouettes have steep vectors. On the other hand, animals with flat vectors, like pigs or frogs, are not very elegant or are not considered to be very elegant. I mean, you can like them, but they are not the most elegant animals you will find in nature. So, just give an example. This is a giraffe, very steep vectors. This is a horse, very steep vector. We judge the grace of a silhouette, the grace of a shape, by the angle of its vector. And then you might say, ah, no, 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 hold on. A leopard has a very flat vector, but hold on a second. A leopard can perform any desired vector in the three-dimensional space. And this is why we consider this animal so graceful, so elegant, because it can climb up and down in any vector desired. Oh, look at this. This is a human ballerina. We judge the grace of a figure, of a silhouette, by the vector it performs. And this is similar in architecture too. I mean, there are facades that have a very flat vector and there are facades they have a very steep vector. You can try it on your own. And once you found out, you will find out in the second step that the details in this facade, they have vectors too. And this is very interesting. I mean, what I'm talking about is the windows, the doors, the openings, they all have a proportion described in a vector. And this is very interesting or an interesting criterion when it comes to the beauty of architecture. Because we judge the beauty of a facade, of a building, of a composition, very similar as we do judging the beauty of a biological silhouette. So, what I'm saying is, look at these terraced houses. They have very steep proportions, very steep vector, and the windows have steep vectors too. And now you might say, oh, no, no, hold on. This is something from good old Europe. No, no, no. This is a street in Chicago. Look at the vectors, very narrow houses, very steep facades, very steep openings. Everything is on the up. When you look at this street, you will have the impression this this city this society, this nation, is on the up because you have very steep vectors. This city, this street gives you the impression that here you will find everything that your society has to offer. Today, unfortunately, we build in a very horizontal way. This is what we build today. I mean, just an example, I don't want to Criticized, but this is a school they built in Berlin. Very flat vectors, very flat openings, and the most flattest or the flattest vector is the horizontal line. And here I want to say something to you that's obvious, but we don't think about it all the time. Horizontal lines are boring. Horizontal lines create boredom. If you don't believe that, you might 
travel through the American prairie or the Australian bush, horizontal lines can be very annoying. Or even the ocean, the horizon, unbroken horizontal lines and even underlined by horizontal ships. And by the way, this is the same thing. Look at modern ship, look at ocean cruisers. It's all about horizontal lines. And this is not, this is not very beautiful in comparison to this ship. You see this? Strong vectors. A very sophisticated balance between horizontal lines and vertical lines. And this is why Painters, classical painters, always love to draw ships or to paint ships because ships are a great balance between strong horizontal lines and strong vertical lines and very steep vectors, steep proportions. And what I'm trying to say is, look at libraries, you can see the difference between contemporary architecture and classical architecture. I mean, a lot, a lot of people know historic reading rooms and libraries. Look at this. Very, very steep proportions, very strong vertical lines. And look at, look at that. This is a contemporary library. I don't want to judge but it's all about horizontal lines, all about horizontal lines. And the combination of books and horizontal lines, boredom means, means boredom. This is a library you, will, you think that you will find a lot of interesting books, books that can teach you how to um, Perform magic tricks. This is a library you will fall asleep after an hour because the only vertical lines you are allowed to see are the outsides of the bookshelves. I mean, try it on. I give another example in the architectonic realm. This is Brook. Great place, great buildings with very, very steep proportions. It, look, it looks nice, it looks elegant. And uh, this is the contrast that contemporary architecture is very flat vectors, very flat proportions, and these proportions tend to have pig-shaped figures, maximizing profits and causing boredom. And this, on the other hand, this looks funny. It looks like a cartograph. Another secret, I, another opinion I want to share is that vivid architecture looks like a cartograph. It goes up and down. Beep, beep, beep. Boring architecture is like a horizontal line. It goes beep. And if you have this horizontal line for 50 or 60 meters, it will be dead or at least narcotic. So, if you want to have vivid architecture, make sure it looks like a human cartograph. I mean, I mean, I mean there are, there are um, fairy tales. There are creatures in fairy tales all over the world about persons, fairies, living on people's roofs. They jump up and down, up and down. Here I, here I have you some examples. Different countries, different cultures. It's all about mythical creatures jumping up and down human roofs because this is a tribute to life. It goes up and down, up and down all the time. And this is human, this is aesthetic, this is biological. This is what we love and this is what we are bored by. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was worth sharing a few minutes with me because I, I try to explain the obvious because when you have 
a sketchbook round. When you fill a sketchbook with facades or urban spaces, if you do some urban sketching, you will find it out on your own. And next time you go to a city and you see, ah, oh, I love this facade. I love this. Check out about the vectors you see and then ask yourself again, why do I like it? Thank you for watching.